Hello and welcome to the Darren Connell Podcast Show. My name's Darren Connell. Sorry that we missed you last week, but there was a wee problem with the sound. But we're back with a good guest, Ian Connell. All right, Darren. How All you right, doing? Mate. Thank How's you. Things? Thank you very much for coming on. You're very welcome, mate. Are we going to have a laugh and talk some shite? That's the plan, isn't it, mate? You tell me. Well, I don't know yet. Let's go for it, but... Let's try. Are Let's you already getting your taps off? No, not really. I can sense that you're not. Either because you just mentioned getting a tit check before it. So, I mean, whether you could see your, your tits. Grass. <laughs> you're an absolute If, if I gave that away, was that no... But anyway, you look good. a persona here uh, uh, that I'm no... A tit-free man. I was like, ah, two minutes, my tits, sorry. Can you see my titties? And Ian's just sitting there, stone-faced. But I'm looking good, though. Thanks. That's why I'm wearing black as well, because it hides it. Right. And I'm wearing a... I'm an extra large on a t-shirt, but I'm wearing a large t-shirt, because it, like, presses the tits in. Aye. Like, see, you look like you've never had that problem. No, I'll not like you, mate. If I had this denim shirt came off, you would see plenty of, <laughs> plenty of tit action. <laughs> Have you got duct tape here, your tits? Uh, I've got a few techniques, mate. See, you, you've never... I don't think you've ever been fat before, have you? Well, no, but that kind of skinny fat way. All right. I've not got fucking abs. I mean, I, I mean, I, if, I, if I was to, again, I'm, I'm not going to promise I'm taking my tap off here, but you're kind of looking like maybe a 70-year-old man. I mean, if you took the heat out of the photograph <laughs> and try to guess the age, there's nothing special here, mate. You would say 70-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> You'd look good in a white vest. I'd look fucking horrific. I mate. just sound like I'm grooming you now, don't I? I, just Aye, I, don't know what's, I don't know what's going on. I was, um, I kind of forgot that this was a video podcast. Aye. So I came out and uh, I came out of my bed and I thought, fuck, I need to shave and all that. And as you can see, I completely fucking missed a bit. Oh, no yeah, aye. Big hairy patch here. So I blew it. Thanks for shaving for the podcast, though. That's nice. Aye, 95% shaved. <laughs> you just look like you're going for a really tough time right now. Uh, Ian, can you make it a couple of weeks ago because you had the builders in, didn't you? I've still got builders and painters and decorators oh. and the whole house is getting done up, so I'm high on paint fumes. High on paint fumes? For a moment. All the American podcasts, when guests can't kind of make it in the big American podcasts, it's because they've got like parts in the Marvel films and Aye. all that kind of stuff, but you can... I've got a part in the fucking Marvel films. <laughs> you can do it because you're getting your kitchen done. <laughs> I actually said that Ian Connell can't make it this week he's getting his kitchen fitted he'll come in in a couple of weeks but he's sorted have they been going through your drawers and all that? probably I mean the guy the guy's in painting painting the new so I mean that's what you would do isn't it? aye that's what I'd do I saw a guy for Burniston I'm going through his fucking loft aye well see when you're see when you're out filming obviously sometimes you're in people's houses you're in actual real houses you know and there's a whole film crew and you're not meant to obviously look Mm. and people's drawers but come on now human nature <laughs> I, I used to I get caught eating biscuits uh, I used to fit kitchens as well mm -hmm. when I can't I was trying to go full time comedy so I was just doing hunters or wee jobs and this guy was like oh there's tea bags there just help yourself but he never left the biscuits suit and see fitting kitchens man it's hard and I was like that sneedy bastard there's no gain us any biscuits but I'm a fucking Fat bastard, anyway. Uh -huh. But <laughs> I looked through his fr I was looking in his fridge, and I was like, "Ah, fucking hell!" There's like hundreds of chocolate and hundreds of biscuits, and I was uh -huh. like, "You couldn't even leave uh, like one biscuit out." Aye, one um, fucking revel. One biscuit, uh -huh. and uh, when I was eating a biscuit, he came in, but I had to hide. I kind of had like turned around and was eating it while the main joiner guy was. Like distracting him. I've never swallowed a full biscuit. I've never panicked because I was like half uh -huh. choking, half thinking I'm going to get caught, but also embarrassed because mm -hmm. it was like a as their own brand of biscuit. It was pure shite. Well, you didn't even take one of these good ones. No. Aye. No, that's quite tame. I mean, if if I've filmed in your house, I've probably tried your pants on. <laughs> never mind eat your fucking biscuits. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> see, that's the difference. I'm going straight for the biscuits, you're going for the pants. Aye. Well, we've got different priorities, mate. Oh, that's that's true. Aye, so they're probably going through your drawers right now, mate. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. That's cool. Mm -hmm. That comes with the... Goes with the territory. Goes with the fee. Aye. So, what you been up to? 
You've got your uncle's tour coming up, ain't you? Well, we'll have our uncle's tour coming up, so this is the plug-in part yes. of the show. So, we're doing a wee tour, your show uncles, this is me and Robert for Burniston. Yeah. So, let me try and remember all the places that we're going to. Glasgow. Sold um, out. In Glasgow? Have we added another one? All right, okay. Sold out. Don't demote a ticket. I'm so right. sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so, uh, Edinburgh, Aberdeen. Greenock, Dumfries, Kirkcaldy, Dundee, Fort William, Dumfries, Livingston. Don't try to nail me down to what the venues are <laughs> or what the dates are. That's, that, that, that's the best I can do. So That's good. So it's a new show. We did it at, a, we, we did it at the King, sorry. We did it at the Kings last year. Yep. And it's the fucking same show, if you saw it there. But in terms of me and Robert, it's a kind of it's a new thing for us, really. I mean, people don't really know about it yet. So. A new project. It's a new project. It's me, Robert, sitting, just chatting away. A couple of new characters, talking a lot of shit. Good. Because um, I know I, I noticed that with the uncles before, we, uh, when you were doing it in Glasgow for the first time. Even though it was in the Kings, it was pretty. You kept it in the hush, didn't you? I mean, it was not pure. Like publicised and and you done like it, it did sell out. Well, that's that's if you don't pay for any advertising, that's how it comes across. If you're just <laughs> if you're just uh, oh. shouting to the same people on Twitter all the time, come and see my show, come and see my show, and then you realise it's just the fucking same ten right. people. See, I and just already got tickets. Were, I thought you were being like arty. I thought that no, I like didn't that. fucking shut up about it. That's the thing, right? You think? <laughs> see, when you go online, you go. I'm constantly fucking going on about these shows. I need to shut up about it. Yeah. And then you bump into yeah. something and go, how how did you uh, no know, say you were doing a show? I know. Oh, fuck, mate. <laughs> When's the next time you're gigging? Aye. Like, oh my God. I get that as well. I feel guilty about posting about my gigs all the time. But uh-huh. then you're like, Twitter's a free app, so shut up. Aye. Like, if you don't like it, fuck off. As long as one tweet, maybe in a hundred, isn't it about your live gigs? I think I that's know. a good... A good ratio for people. Or retweeting praise. I used to do that all the time. Like if Aye. somebody says, good gig, you retweet it. But then all the other comedians call you a dick. Aye. Like, right, I better stop that then. Aye, I don't really do that, but I don't think everybody... I think some people think people who retweet praise are going, oh, fucking look at me. Yeah. Look, people are saying I'm brilliant. And I mean, but I think it's maybe they're mere going, look, I'm doing live things and people are enjoying them. Aye. I don't think it's because people think they're brilliant. I like blowing the rain trumpet. Aye. I, that's why I retweet it. Not to blow my own trumpet, it's to... <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like I didn't. Uh-huh. Uh, it's, so I just don't go back to working a, a shite job. Mm-hmm. I'm like, please come and see me live. Aye. So I don't, you know... Sounds pretty sad, doesn't it? Aye, I think it makes any difference, but anyway... Does it fuck? Doesn't it get one person to go does, and see you? Does it fuck? <laughs> See the amount of times is where well, you next time you're gigging and you're like black friars match for the ticket. Is that a like, voice you read other people's tweets in? Aye, that's my inner voice. Uh-huh. Ian Connell's coming to do a podcast today. Don't chew on his neck or nothing, man. Don't bite him. Man. Everything will be alright. Cut that out. That's fucking weird. I was just weird when it. <laughs> Mate, don't do not cut that out. Keep cut on, that out. Keep on. I says I was going to bite his neck. Oh no. So, see, the uncle's idea, how did you, um, was this something that was always there for your earlier days that you just kind of went back to, or was it, like, how did you come up with it? We did, um, we did a wee thing ages ago, and nobody will remember this, but it was called 0141. Aye, aye. And the idea was that it was phone conversations. Yeah. So, the two years just kind of sat, and um, just fucking made up shit, just improvised it, basically, aye. you know. A couple of a um, couple of people on either end of the phone, um, and they were quite funny. But we didn't um, we didn't really do anything. We only did a few, and then kind of chucked it. So we kind of went back to that. Although it's no, we're mm-hmm. not talking on the phone. We're a couple of a couple of guys chatting in, in the pub. I so loved, I loved that. It was amazing. See the one with the the spoons, the cutlery, the cutlery that had me uh-huh. tears of laughter, man. Uh, aye, that was good. So it was also because you get a wee bit fed up uh, with your writing sketches all the time. I just kind of sat at a desk, just doing this fucking all day long. So we says, right, okay, let's just try and change the process. A wee bit, yeah. we'll just sit, put a wee recorder down and see what happens. And improv. 
Do you enjoy that more, or is that just another thing? It's just a wee, it's just a wee change. A wee change. Because you've all... It's, it's enjoyable, but I obviously you need to really whittle it down, because like 99% of it is just shit. <laughs> <laughs> you could say that about my writing as well. But <laughs> <laughs> and my podcast. <laughs> it's just me shit if I've not got the two to compress mm-hmm. it into 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. I just look like the rain man. I've got a wee... Uh, a wee story actually about one of your, one of your previous guests, Gredo. One, Gredo of, one, of, one of the first times that I met him. Um, he was telling me he was on the thing called the Paleo Diet. Aye. The paleo Diet. So he's telling me, I say, so what's that? Is that like a caveman kind of thing? He says, I basically, if I can only eat it of cavemen. <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> Could have ate it. <laughs> I'm all right. And he goes, he says, but I'm not sure whether I can eat, whether I can drink milk. Do you think cavemen could have drank milk? So I'm thinking, this is probably cavemen could have got milk, aye. And he goes, that's all right then. He says, because I've been having milk in my Cheerios every morning. <laughs> <laughs> that's not even a joke, is it? That is like Gredo. That is Gredo. No, He's I didn't realise until he said it. <laughs> oh, no way, Cheerios. Can he have Cheerios? <laughs> He's half his nut, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Um, it's a good laugh. Aye, he says like he's allergic to, he's allergic to a chemical in takeaway food and he can't eat it, but that's not going to, like I went into his car and there's just empty McDonald's wrappers everywhere and empty McDonald's cups and I was like, I thought you can eat that and he's like, ah, fuck it, but you know, it's actually fucking himself up, Mm -hmm. he's half his nut. You told me before that you did a gig. Just kind of shortly after the Jolly Boy John character appeared. Aye. And somebody shouted, for real, at you. Is that right? All the time, mate. Uh, <laughs> one of the many reasons why I've got contacts and a beard. Because <laughs> uh, when that was, like, when Burniston was booming, I mean, for me, I think, uh, I mean, Jolly Boy John's my favourite character, and I think it's probably one of the most popular characters. So when that was kind of booming, I was like, God, man, I'm just getting hit. This is like, even before I'm getting to the stage, people are shouting it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, so I'm, I need to perform the gig, which is hard. But then I've, in my head, I'm like, I need to deal with Jolly Boy John heckles. And it was becoming like a running uh, thing at each gig. And uh, So see when you saw like the sketch? Aye. Did you think... Aye. People are going to call, yep. <laughs> people are going to call me. Because you sometimes get that. You know I mean, people will come up to you and they go, mate, see the first time I saw that character. Not just him, but other <laughs> characters. I just went, oh, <laughs> fuck. I know. I look like that character. Well, the very first time I seen it, it was like, I was sitting watching, having a cup of tea, and the, the show was on the telly, and then my phone was buzzing. And it was like, for three of my really good mates, just like, for real, no way, you're on the telly, ha ha, uh, that's you on the telly, laugh out loud, and I was like, oh, for fuck's sake, man, <laughs> and then it just kind of, mm-hmm. but then see, I done, I used to do jokes about pickles, right, really shite jokes, it wasn't funny, but I, when I was starting, here's an example of a pickle joke, no, I mean, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, well, I've said the pickle joke on the podcast to Tony right. Yuri. I can't say it again. Cause oh, it's, you've done it already? I saw it already. Okay. But uh, I'll tell you when we're finished. And, but I do a video. It's a pickle video where I say I'm addicted to pickles like a junkie. And that's my thing. Right. And then you've done the pickles with Jolly Boy John. But see, because I've only... I've got nothing on YouTube. So see, because I was doing well with stand-up, every time somebody searched for me, they were just finding a stupid pickle video. Mm-hmm. And then you done the pickle with the Jolly Boy John. And I, see, when I seen you do the pickle stuff, I was like, oh, no! As soon as it was starting to, like, calm Fucking down... Fucking guy's killing me off. I, you're pulling me back in, man. <laughs> uh, so then it was the pickle stuff. And then I, I actually do a pickle joke in my set. And mm-hmm. I had to drop it. I had to totally drop it. I'm trying to remember what, what the fucking pickle... Or rolling the pickled onions. Aye. aye, aye, right, okay. Aye, so I've even had workies shout it in mm-hmm. bands and all that. Jolly Boy John. I'm like, aye. It's just, it's just, so you've had it shouted at you and Mel and I've had it. Do you get it a lot? Shouted at me? No, never. You never get it? <laughs> <laughs> 
What do, does you've anybody taken that, shout at You've anything? taken that for me. They probably think I'm fucking Jolly Boy John then. Because I've got my specs on most of the time. Oh, okay. um, nah, no really. People don't recognise me as much not until I take the, the specs off that the magic happens. Not I mean the Clark... Kent effect. See, you look like Jolly Boy John the new, but if he, like, sorted his he's, life he's out. Sorted. <laughs> <laughs> he smartened up a wee bit. Aye. Like a handsome, mere chiselled version. Uh-huh. No, I don't get sh- that many things shouted at me, but like I say, when I've got the specs off, which is when I go swimming. Yeah. So if I go swimming, I get fucking recognised with wee guys who then start kind of following <laughs> me about the pool like a wee school of fish. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And the guard must be looking down going, what the fuck is going on there? Aye. For this guy. And all these, all these wee guys <laughs> are falling about the swimming pool. And your para. And you go and ex- mate, uh, just, uh, just to explain the situation here. I'm Jolly Boy John. I'm actually Jolly Boy John, I. Uh, <clears throat> so no, I don't have that many kind of uh, things like that. The kind of weirdest thing that happened to me in terms of getting recognised, um, I suppose it's a slightly dirty story, in a way. Part of a way. You know what I mean? N- NSFW for anybody that's watching us and well they're doing their council job <laughs> um, I was at a party I was at a party in a, in a, in a, in a pub in the town and uh, a bunch of people come in. This, this was just after the first series of Burniston had, had finished and this bunch of people come in and uh, they recognised me oh that's a guy a guy for Burniston guy for Burniston so they come out and they're kind of just fucking taking, they just kind of grab you and just taking photographs and uh, and stuff like that, right? So most of them went away, but one guy stayed talking to me. And um, so he's talking away about what his favourite sketches are and stuff like that. And then he goes, and he points out that he's at his girlfriend and he goes, listen mate, see if you want it. <laughs> <laughs> you can suck her nipples. <laughs> So I'm going, I'm going, he didn't, he didn't say, he didn't say that. So I'm like, what? And he went, honestly, mate, honestly, I'm not just saying this because you're on the telly or anything like that, right? You can suck her nipples if you want. So I just fucking looked at him last and he kind of went, I gave me a look as if to say, well, fucking fine, mate, if you're not fucking <laughs> interested. Are we weird though, mate? I mean, she's just cutting about with her pal. She's no idea, you know what I mean, that her... Boyfriend was acting as some kind of fucking nipple pimp. Aye. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so what? Like, what do you think was going to happen? Aye, mate. Aye, mate, can I? Please. Glitches her. And it's very fucking specific, isn't it? Aye. It's like, am I, am I allowed to go anywhere else? Aye. Is that, is that the end of it? You, you know what I mean? Where is it to happen? <laughs> if we go, <laughs> if we go out in the street and in and, and, and the toilets. So hang on, I'm not just saying this because you're on the telly. Oh fucking! If anybody oh. gets, if anybody gets to do it, me or no, I'm Thank you very I'm flattered. So that was it. Like, so the first series had just come on. So at that point, I'm going, is this going to be happening to me? <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or a time? <laughs> or these kind of offers? But no, no, no. One nipple fuck. has been offered <laughs> so since. Imagine that. If I'd fucking known I wasn't going to get any more offers, obviously, I'd, I'd, I'd think a chance. Me, I told my, I told my wife that. Aye. You know, after a couple of years, but my says, "Listen, I've see if I get offered an old nipple, I'm not passing it up again." <laughs> <laughs> you come in for a night out, and you you look like you've seen a ghost. She's like, "Ian, what's wrong with you?" Mm-hmm. Like, uh, how do you start that? I did actually look. Um, like I'd seen a ghost. I think after it, I, I fucking couldn't go to that place quickly enough. Aye, can't even risk running into that guy again at the party. No. It's like I'm fucking out of here. Everybody's like, "Should everybody see you later? See you later." <laughs> I think everybody was like, why did he rush away so quickly? I had to explain to everybody. Aye, mm-hmm. I've got a sore tummy. Aye. <laughs> got a bad tummy. So imagine he's just like standing there awkwardly mm-hmm. watching you suck his bird's mm-hmm. nipples. So I've had mere... Aye, I, I don't know where he was meant to be. Aye. I assume he was going to... Aye, he's got to be there. I, Aye, I think we were providing some kind of entertainment Aye. for him. It wasn't just about my pleasure. <laughs> You know what I mean? I think he was getting Aye, like somewhere. you and his wife really don't want to do it. Yeah. He's the only one that's enjoying it. Aye. So I think, um, so I've been offered my nipples. Aye. And then I have had, uh, like, four real shouted at me. Oh. And Anna Street. Have you never... If you'd been offered my nipples and you'd had four real shouted at you, you'd be, you'd be doing all right. I'd be sitting here a very happy a man. Orgy, your life would be. <laughs> Mate, if I was getting offered, I wouldn't be sitting here. <laughs> no, you'd, you'd be, be sitting at a table yourself. <laughs> 
Have you ever had any other weird... Uh, obviously, if it gets too weird, you don't need to talk about it. But no, no, that is, uh, that's as weird... That's as weird as it gets. G- generally, you know, it's generally just people come up. I did have a, you know, you'd have a guy who comes up and they kind of recognise you, kind of go, he's, he's looking at you like, who are you? He's kind of pointing. Aye. Who are you? Who are you? And he's not saying anything, he's just kind of looking at you. And then he realises and he said, who are you? And then he just goes, <laughs> doesn't fucking say a lot. <laughs> that's like, he sorted it in his mind. I knew who you are now, my way. I, always I don't want to talk to you though. Do you never get, are oh, you in like, still game? You're like, nah, I'm, it's Burnless then, mate. Eh, uh, nah, no really. Or other things like that? I just, people just think, just vaguely, you're a guy, Aye. a guy off the telly, nah, nah, no really. Nah? No really, mate. Because you're quite... Disappointing you here, but... Nah, it's, um... Occasionally people can't believe I'm not a model, you know what I mean? I'm all fucking honestly. You're not? Aye, honestly. I thought you were. I don't right. have. I'm no way an agency or anything like that. I thought you were. Because Robert Florence is quite modelly, isn't he? And he, he loves well, himself. Well, he fucking he likes to think so. <laughs> Aye, it's like as far so. as I'm aware, there's been no agencies on their phone. <laughs> he doesn't make it out like that, but does he? Are you suggesting? For fuck's sake. Are you suggesting that he's creating a false image for himself? I thought he was getting a wage for it. Is he just taking selfies in his room? Well, ain't we all, mate, though? No. Well, why? That's true. I've got a cheek. I'm quite bad for all that, I know. Mm-hmm. Only for the chin up, but. Do you think that's like um, when, people, when, when you do that, do you feel like you've kind of like achieved something as like a comedian? Sometimes I do that, I'll go, right, okay, I could sit down and write a couple of pages. Then I'll go, and I'll just fucking point my phone at myself and take a photograph, and that counts as a day's work. Aye. You ever, <laughs> you ever if you that? get over 50 likes, you're like, yeah, it's me putting a shift. Aye. That's a classic, get if you get, get 50 get, likes. Get it, get it, Owen. That was a hard graft. <laughs> so, <clears> you've done stand-up a few times as well. Sneaky, sneaky. Uh, I've only done it at once. Or oh, once? I think a, I few, a, done a few times would be... Exaggerating. Well, I thought you were, like, when I say a few times, I did think it was maybe three or four. No. So you've done I did it at the, the, the Yes Bar, you know, at, the, at the new material night. Yep, at the Wednesday. On the Wednesday mm-hmm. night, but my missus goes out running on a Wednesday with her pals, so I can't really interrupt that. Yeah. I mean, that time is sort of sacrosanct, so I can't really um, just say, I'm going out to do it. Yeah. I quite enjoyed it, but the, the, the night I went out, it was, uh, it was like a storm. Yeah. So I was like, Aqua playing in my way into the town and going, nobody's going to be here. Aye. Um, there, was, there was only like seven or eight people there, and I think maybe nine comedians. So the comedians outnumbered yeah. the audience. Um, and I think I think it was like, there's a couple of people from Aberdeen, a couple of people from Manchester, a couple of London. I think it was maybe just people that were staying in hotels in the town because nobody else was, was going out. So it went all right. Went all right. I mean, right. I would do, I would do it again, but it was fucking ages ago. I haven't done it again, but I would do it. That's good though that you're doing it, because uh, I mean the but the, the kind of you and Robert. Robert's the kind of he's a lot louder and he's more social media. But you're the kind of quiet one. But a lot of people say that you're funny, like maybe funnier. I can't say that about Robert. <laughs> no, don't keep that. Keep on. No, don't keep. No, but you know what I mean. It's like. Like you're, you don't punt yourself out there. You're just kind of chilled. So, well, like to the I, point that I would say maybe you're. What's even, the fucking punt? Well, I to the point that maybe you're even like underrated. Uh huh. So you should day stand up again. What should I be rated at? Well, uh, at a ten. <laughs> what, well, looks. Just in general. Looks ten. Right. Funny. Five or something. <laughs> Kidding on. No, you're funny as fuck. How did I give you a compliment for sounding like a dick? How dare you just say you're funny as fuck? You're I'll... funny as fuck, mate. You want a tan on my shoulder? What I mean? That's pure. Butter in there, mate. Butter in. Pure gin. So, you've done that once and you wouldn't go, well, you want to go back, but you're just too busy? I've kind of had other stuff. I've obviously, we had the Burniston live stuff and we've got us uncle's live stuff, so. Yeah. There's only, I mean, if, if you're going out and you start to date a lot, then you've got that fucking thing of trying to sell tickets again. Ah. And then feeling like you're just fucking asking people for money all the time. I know. Um, that's quite frustrating, that part of it, isn't it? Like, I just thought, I'll just worry about being funny 
and now it's like I'm worried about people buying tickets now. Like Aye. that seems to be the main concern uh-huh. in my life is just selling tickets for shows. Stay on any Netflix specials. <laughs> Just talk shit. Everybody's doing them, seems to be doing alright, so if you just do one of them. How would they do that? You'd be laughing. I think you can just put them on, can you? I think you just upload them. <laughs> on Netflix, <laughs> like a YouTube thing. Aye. I'll put my pickle video do up. That? Um, quite a lot of people think, uh, I says, how do we do it? Uh, Connell, do you get a lot of people thinking that we are related? I do, yeah, people ask me. So like the ans- in the answer, person? Aye, aye. aye. The answer varies, just just depending on the mood. Sometimes yeah. I'm your dad. Oh. Um, the Dundee Chronicle, I think it was, interviewed me and asked me, actually, if we were related, and I said it was your dad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping that appears in the, in, in the paper. Good. Sometimes I'm your uncle. Aye. Sometimes you're my uncle. So <laughs> nobody, really, nobody really goes for that. <laughs> I say that and all. Da, uncle, I've said second cousin a few times. Uh, and people always ask me as well. To my mm-hmm. face. I'm like, aye, that's how I start. That's how I get my start. He got me in. And they're like, got me in well. And I'm like, yes, shoot, shoot me in. Well, the first time I think I was aware of you, you sent me a message on Twitter saying you were my cousin. Oh, really? <laughs> I was thinking, I've got a fucking distant <laughs> cousin here that I forgot about. as one of my uncles been putting his cell a bit. No way. I can't, believe, I can't believe you remember that, mate. I think I tweeted you, uh, all right, mate, I'm your second cousin. I need a couch to kip on or something. I need, a, <laughs> I I need your know. couch to kip on for Aye, that's right, that's right. Aye, aye. And then you said, can he, mate, it's it, it's it burning in the middle of the street or something like that. And I thought, <laughs> ah, he's funny. Mm-hmm. He's, a, he's a good egg. No, that was happening. Ah, right. Because <laughs> then I used to tweet you shit all the time and you always used to get back to me and I was like, ah, he's actually a good guy. Uh-huh. Ah, he's a good lad. Thank you very much, mate. Aye. Thank you very much. I was like, somebody's listening to me listening to my shite and then I put my friendship up for sale and all remember I'd done that I think you followed me before I was just like an open spot and I was I just trolled somebody and I put I put my friendship up on eBay for right. charity and it started bidding and it started picking up momentum and I had to I remember the bidding it. but I don't remember what came of that I had to cancel it somebody said they wanted to shag me basically and it was quite so friendship wasn't enough for us? No. For us guy. <laughs> and he never even put in a high bid as well. That's what I found more hurtful about it. Like, obviously... What was it, how much was the bid? It wasn't much, it was like 20 quid or something, mate. But other people were bidding, but the guy that wanted to shag me only bidded like 20 quid. <laughs> so obviously I was disturbed with that, uh-huh. but I was like... Is that hurt. for a single session? Or is that for like a year's <laughs> supply? I don't know because I was... Thankfully I was not dealing with that. Somebody else was dealing with the online stuff. Uh, but I, I was just like, at ah, 20 quid, fuck it off, mate. So mm-hmm. Up it. So tell me, let me ask you a question about your uh, live shows that you're going to be doing. Okay. Right. I love how you're just quickly changing the subject about me chagging randoms. I don't want to hear the end of the story. All right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, we've been going out with each other for too young. <laughs> so how is, um, people always ask me, like, how, so how do you, how do you do it? You know, when you're actually kind of working. So, mate, how do you... How do you do your stand-up? How do I do stand-up? Do you write it before you do it? Do you just go out and try it out? What do you do, mate? Uh, I've, never wrote, I've never wrote my set out, but I, I would write it in, like, bullet points. So, I would have notes, but if you were to read my notes, I don't think you would... You wouldn't get it, but... I've structured it in a way that I would... Because I don't want it to come across like it's scripted. Uh-huh. We stand up anyway. If you come and see me and you're like, oh, he's just memorising something and it doesn't really seem real. So uh-huh. if I, say, I, say when you came to see me and I'm talking about like being a barber and the Jehovah's Witnesses, Aye. I kind of knew that they were going to be there that night. I had a feeling that they were going to turn up. Mm-hmm. So I was like, right. I've got that in the back of my head. If he heckles me, I'll hit him. And he heckled me, and I was like, jackpot. So it's hundreds of, you know, ifs and buts. But I've never uh, wrote a joke it word for word. Aye. Because your stand-up seems a wee bit kind of wild at times. 
You know I mean, there's just wee moments of wildness. Aye. And so I'd always kind of wonder when I watch it, I wonder if he ever writes any of this stuff down or if he just fucking goes for it like a madman. Uh, I, 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 I go for it, I, I, I mean, I've got a premise, but I, I leave myself open for, I love improvising. Because mm-hmm. I've, I've done stand-up for so long now, it's a wee bit boring. So I like to kind of go into the unknown and I get more of a buzz for improvising. And if it gets a good laugh, I'll just keep it in my set for the next time. Mm-hmm. To just keep myself sharp, I think. Uh, but, I was that the first time you seen me at the stand? I was no, like, I saw you at Blackfriars. Oh, Blackfriars, aye. In the the stand. year before. That was mental that night at the stand, wasn't it? That drunk guy in the front row and all that. Aye, aye, it was, um, he was quite, uh, he became quite prominent in the show, that guy. Mm. <laughs> I'm like shagging a stool mm-hmm. while he's heckling me. I've aye. not done that since. That was the first and last time <clears> I've done that. When we did, uh, when we did Burniston, Live the first time we did it, it was a fight. Because I think I saw somebody mention there was a, a fight at the first still game show. Was that in a. Somebody, somebody was talking about that. So we, we, we did that, I know. Uh, people were fighting. Because um, I think some guy was shouting it, just lines. Yeah. All the time. Because you hear it when you're up on the stage. You know what I mean? You're doing a sketch and some guy shouting wooden pallets um, in the middle of, I don't know, doing the fucking lift sketch or something like that. Mm. So some people are just there, just just shouting at kind of random times and other people kind of get a bit fed up with it and so it results in a lot of violence so right. I think if people come to see uncles it's almost guaranteed if you're a violent person this is the place <laughs> this is the show to see come and scrap at it uh-huh. I, can, that, I mean I hate heckles right just uh-huh. with a passion I just right. don't like it I mean it's di- see if somebody heckles me and it's you're, it's helping the show but see when people just shout words Mm-hmm. You're like, how am I supposed to feed off that? But uh, uh, you got a lot of hecklers at the Kings, and uh, I remember, was it Jerry or something, or you? And you were like, ah, oh, shut the fuck up. Like, somebody just broke character for a sec. I mean, it was funny. Mm-hmm. It was it was definitely funny, but you're like, ah, oh, shut up. I think your fucking Tash was hanging off and all that. Uh, that was good. Jenny Wayne's, Darren? What? Jenny Wayne's? No. No. Uh, why? Just asking. I've no, I need to get a bob first. Just to, to get the opportunity to get to know you a wee bit better. Ask, uh, it's normally, I'm getting you the interview, mate. All right, sorry, Don't you asked me Don't fucking switch this room. Yeah, right, go, mate. Back me in a corner. <laughs> you asked me then. I've got a persona. I'm a clown prince. Right. I don't want them to know about my personal life. Mm-hmm. Well, I've, I've, got, I've got three boys. Um, and a lot of... A lot of life kind of um, revolves around balls when you've got, you know what I mean, when, you, when you've got three three sons, um, like the room that where I work in, right, right is beside, uh, it's just beside the toilet, right, so my youngest boy comes up, right, and he goes in and sits down, I'm typing away, and I can hear him going, ah, oh, ah, oh. so I'm going, what's up with you? And he goes, sometimes I just hate doing jobbies. <laughs> <laughs> what age is he? <laughs> he's, uh, he's six. So I'm going, how's that? Why is that? And he says, because sometimes when I'm wiping my bum, I get jobbies on my balls. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so I was fucking pissing myself laughing because when he said that, it was the first time I'd ever heard him call his balls his balls. Aye. He'd never, really, <laughs> he never said that. So I'm laughing away and he says, listen, Dad, what you need to do is you need to come in here, right, and put some water on the toilet paper and wipe my balls. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm pushing myself and he's he's getting annoyed. He said, hey, come in and wipe my balls. Dad, come in here and wipe my balls. So eventually I managed to head through it into the toilet and he goes, Dad, it's okay. You only need to wipe one of my balls. <laughs> <laughs> he get the other one. The other one was was jobby free, <laughs> apparently. So, but that's uh, that's my that's my life. Is that the joys of fatherhood? That's the joys of fatherhood. Aye. And he's six. See if he see, see if you're like ah, he's eighteen. I was like what? That would have been weird. Aye. So he's six. What age? But you'd like to be in that position, where if you were, you know, older. <laughs> 
that you could shout in somebody. You know, come, <laughs> and, come and wipe my balls. And they just do it. I, I, all right, I'm sorry. I would not like to be in that position. I would die. Uh, I can't wipe my ass anyway. So to get somebody to help me, that would be that would be nice. Mm-hmm. We used to. We're kind of a bit past the stage where we used to. Once well, having as balls and fucking toilet related, but we used to go. I've got three sons, and we used to go for meals. And uh, they'd they've got a thing about just going for a shite if they're in a restaurant. It's like <laughs> a wee adventure to go and check out the the toilet. <laughs> If you're in the tune, some of the fuck, you know the toilets are away, you know, away, way down in the in the depths of hell, um, and so it's a wee adventure for them. Aye. So, but I remember one time we went out and uh, one had to go for uh, for a shite. Mm. Then the other one was saying, "You need to take me, you need to take me." I'm busting, I'm busting, I'm busting. But he was too wee to just let him go himself, and I was sitting with the youngest who was away at the time, so I had to fucking take. The way in and Tim and go. So there was fucking nobody at the table. <laughs> no, the food comes, it's when the food arrives. You know what I mean? So anyway, there'll be thankfully they're a wee bit past that stage where they can go to the toilet themselves, you know, And the you're just standing there watching them shite. Are you, are you as just, your dinner's up in the as table. As your dinner's fucking freezing. <laughs> See, I babysit my nephew quite a lot mm-hmm. and I have to change his nappy and stuff, and that's I've still not got used to that. Do you know right. what I mean? Because he does say Things like I've got chocolate, I've got chocolate in my bum and all that, and you're like, right? <laughs> I know it's no chocolate. I've been babysitting them for about a year now, so I know it's no chocolate. Mm-hmm. It's shite every time. Have mm-hmm. you ever shot your pants? I asked Grado that. I've asked Tom Yuri that as well. So such a traditional. Have you ever shot your pants? Beyond what age are we talking? As an adult? As an adult, aye. No, for fuck. Oh, I never. It's you daft. <laughs> Why would I do that? Like nerves or something like before? Because I was nervous when I shite like, myself because like I was nervous. Well, and then going to a stage for fucking an hour and a half. <laughs> 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 You've just made me realise how stupid that question is. Plus the fucking interval. You know what I mean? Aye. Fair enough. <laughs> Pissing my dreams, mate. You know what I mean? You wouldn't get asked that question at Imagine That in BBC Scotland. No, I can't, Im- I can't imagine if I'm ever on Graham Norton, he's going to ask me, did you shite yourself? You ever shite yourself? Never shite yourself, in? You'd probably answer it, but... I'd give him the same answer. No, you'd get wide with me, you wouldn't get wide with him, but... I'm just saying, oh no, Graham. I Graham, don't do, actually, I don't yes. do shites in my pants. A few times, actually, Graham. I, I, when I used to be a windy cleaner as well, I remember I was going up the ladders and... You've done a fucking few jobs. Oh, mate, aye. Oh, shite. I was going up the ladders and I was at the top of the ladders and you try not to look through the window to see what's in the room but there was this, like on on the window there was a, I mean a shrine of, who's that, the country singer, hum, Humpo, Humpo Dick, Humpo Dick, Humpo Dick, Humpo Dick, Humpo Dick, I him. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a fucking Humpo Dick. Humpo Dick, did I say <laughs> Humpo Dick? Good country singer. So there's a. Sh- like it's Harry Humpo Dick, I know. Is no, it him you mean? No, no. The first Engelbert. One, right. Uh, I'm just like, that ah, looks really weird. And it was a shrine, and uh, this woman, as I'm washing the window, this woman's just like banging on the window. She's like, ah, don't, don't get my boyfriend, that's my boyfriend. You're trying to. Don't get him? Aye. What the fuck it mean, don't get him? Aye, don't Which get you about bar angle bit? I don't know, mate. But I'm just like washing the window, trying not to laugh, trying not to fall off the ladders as well. Aye. And I'm just like, what the fuck is happening Aye. here? The, the, you think everybody's kind of. I always say that the window cleaners don't get my boyfriend. Don't get him, leave him alone. <laughs> don't touch my boyfriend! <laughs> I used to work in a sports shop, but when I was younger, and that, I mean, we were dealing with the trainers and that. But I was out at the, the shop front and a guy uh, stole. Um, I think he stole a, a, a trainer, I think he stole. <laughs> I'm guessing he stole, maybe he stole the other one for another shop and was matching him up. One but but he, ran, he ran away and then the boss went to me, you're supposed to chase him. I was like, I'm a fuck. Aye. Fucking chasing a guy down the, down the town. <laughs> for one trainer. For one, for, one, for one trainer. Probably four quid an hour. He's probably got a knife, isn't he? Aye. Just well. in case. You think... I'm slow, <laughs> fucking slow as, <laughs> as fuck, so it would just be embarrassing anyway. Aye. You know what I mean? Me try to chase some wee nappy speedster. You've got to say, if somebody's stealing one trainer, you don't want to fuck with somebody like that. 
Because they would, you'd think they'd stab you, no bother. Or batter you with a fucking trainer. Aye, no bother. Mm. So I get shifted, I get shifted uh, doing, to the, doing, doing the stairs, getting the, getting the trainers for people and chucking them up. I had to lace some somebody's shoes up one time, I know. Oh, really? Out at the, out at the shop front, guy was going to try the trainers when they were they laced up. You know what I mean? And I was just kind of panicking a bit, trying to do it quickly, and the guy's going like, <laughs> <laughs> the whole fucking time, which was making it worse. No, I mean, it seemed like the fucking, the wee eyelets were just fucking oh, yeah. shrinking. No, I mean, and the laces seemed to be getting fucking You'll bigger than I, I was there. <laughs> <laughs> Have you always done acting when you were younger and stuff? Or was did you just fall into it? Or? That there was a, a place called Toonspeak. Oh, Toonspeak, aye. Uh, no way. And it used to be kind of in uh, sort of Burmullock and Ballonlock and all that, a few ah, different yeah. places where it was, where it was based. So, just a drama teacher at school said to me, you should go to that thing. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I wasn't really thinking about it, so I went along, did it, that's where I met Robert. So, we started kind of writing some, it's some, some daft shit there. Aye. No way. I used to go to Toonspeak as well. Aye. Aye. So, that's where, that's where the magic started to happen. And Toonspeak and Bermark. But after doing the kind of extra stuff, so I did a wee bit of acting, and then Robert phoned me up one day and he said, you fancy doing a wee bit of writing? Mm. Um so we started kind of writing nonsense and we go into writing, you know, for chewing the fat and stuff like that. So we used to do quite a bit of stuff for that. Yep. Like the big man, for example, we used to write the, the big man character. Brilliant. That was us. It's quite hard to write him because you had to come up with a new thing to shove up somebody's arse, basically. And every every sketch, he was going <laughs> to be shoving something so far up somebody's <laughs> arse. It had to be a different thing. And something different had to happen because of this thing getting shoved up. So it ended up your fucking for two hours trying to... <laughs> so we probably spent mere fucking brain power and thinking of ways to shove things up. People's, <laughs> people's assholes. So anybody else. Because you were behind the scenes for a long time, weren't you, doing things like tuna fat? That, does that feel quite weird, knowing that you just a right for that? And now you are... I mean, that must be surreal, that that's so popular, that's such a popular show. Well, you used to hear people, you know, saying the lines Aye. and stuff, and you were out and about. Um, so you could go, oh, that's good. That's that's Aye. one of that's one of yours. Um, so you were kind of quite, you were quite pleased. Nice when that happened. But when we got into our thirties, we thought if we're going to actually do any of this performing here, we better get a move on now because yeah. we're fucking getting old. Mm-hmm. I mean, getting too old for it. So we better hurry up. So that's when we decided let's go for it with with Burniston. Brilliant. So how did uh, how did that come about? Was that for the comedy unit? It was. I it was originally there was a radio pilot. Yeah. Somebody was looking for ideas for the, for the radio. So we had this idea. Um. So we recorded a bunch of sketches. It went out in the radio, but the telly guy heard it. Yeah. And he went on to another pilot. So we did a radio pilot and a telepilot pilot, mm-hmm. and it went well enough to. To get a get a series, good. There was a guy who worked on a show. Says to me, "Listen, you know, honestly, see if that telepile. Did you think you'd any chance of getting a <laughs> get, get, getting a series? I mean, I, I don't know. I didn't have a clue. He says, no, I, I, I fucking didn't think you were going to get, <laughs> get, get it.' No, oh, cheers, mate. Cheers, mate. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> At least he's honest. Fuck's sake. <laughs> Well, that's all for the podcast this week. Um, Thanks a lot for tuning in, and thank you very much to Ian Connell. Cheers, Darren. Thank you very much, mate. You going to retweet it and that? I'll tweet it out, mate. Thanks. That's appreciated. Normally, everybody's told us to fuck off Right. when I've asked that, but... Aye, I'm going to delete my account now, so... (laughs) Get it up. Uh, But thanks a lot to Ian for coming, and now we're going to have a wee musical guest in called... Carol Bridgman, who's actually going to be my support act for my show at the Glasgow Comedy Festival. So, uh, thank you very much, and see you next week.
Just want to 
Let the people change, yeah.